All right, everybody, give me just a second. I'll get this goofy music off. I kind of dig it. Me too. Kind of with it. Yeah. Late night jam. I say late night, but. Dude, I'm jam. old. This is totally late night jam. Yeah. All right, everybody. So we're going to pick up, and I think we're going to get in the meat potatoes of this whole. Meat and taters. This whole space shuttle evacuation thing. Like, well, hey, you is, keep saying space shuttle, and I, I don't want to correct you, but. Why, what do you want to call it? Well, because it's important. Like the space shuttle itself is a program that's no longer. It's what remember. So the thing that we'd see all comes to mind. Okay. Okay. The space shuttle was a pretty awesome program, but experienced some significant losses in the, in crew members, and they actually so they, that program is no longer up and running. Um. More so now, they're even with your, all the the major uh, parties involved with the sending people to space now use like this capsule. So think of the shuttle as the the living quarters and the thing that got them there all okay. in one. The capsule is not a living quarters; it's tiny. It's just enough to put a crew inside dock up to the <clears throat> space station and then they have the space station to live in. So what word should, what is the proper? Uh, I mean, you can call it whatever you want. I'll know what so you're I talking about. On a rocket, yes. So a space shuttle launched, but a space capsule requires a rocket to launch. Yes, the space shuttle had the, like the boosters attached to it. When like you explained rocket. all this, I imagine, like, you got pulled into a room with a bunch of, like, black suit guys. Negative. They were like, they were I had like, to figure this out on my own. They were like, hey, we're going to cancel the space shuttle project. We had a really <laughs> shitty evacuation route. No. We're going to make a new project, and we need you to um, <laughs> I No, it's... It, That's not how it works. No, I'm more, much more of a peon than that. I don't really go, get involved in the decision makings for programs, but they need people in those programs, and that's you know something that I'm they... I'm glad I could make you say that. Yeah. I'm glad that we, I could make you vulnerable enough to admit that the men in black did not get you to... Or did they? And I just don't know. They put that little wand in front of your face? Or did they and you won't tell me? I, would I know? <laughs> By the way, quick <laughs> shout out. Raise Energy Drinks. Raise Energy Drinks. Uh, I'm an ambassador for Raise now. And uh, they, they sent me a couple cases of this stuff. Asked me to do a review. Uh, I'm not going to do the review yet. I do like this can, but I'm not going to go into like an in-depth review. I've had three of the flavors so far. All three are good. Um, gummy about a worm's week or so. good. Gummy worm's good? Solid. Does it taste like a gummy worm to you? Yes. Um, the sour worms. So Chris Terrio also tasted the gummy worm, and he liked it. He tried it not all that cold, though. Like, I just had the case, mm. went to the tattoo shop, and he, he tried it, and mm. he, he thought it was really good. Too. Yeah. Hmm, that's kind of interesting, I would. Are you allowed to say brands on this? Yeah, for the most part, you can say anything as long as you're giving them credit and you're not discrediting anybody. In uh. addition to, like, we can we can actually play music if I give them credit. Mm. Here's the thing, though: if this show gets monetized, I then have to pay them a portion. Sure, royalties for that. Yeah. yeah. You have to, so. Is it is it predated? Like, if could they go back and say, "Oh, you did a show before you were monetized"? It depends on their publishing label. Uh. So it's. Contract language. Yeah, boring. it's, dude, it's ridiculous. It's boring, but it's okay. my life. <clears throat> so the space capsule. <laughs> <laughs> it so, leaves, so this this is what is actually attached to the space station. Yeah, think of strapping yourself to a rocket, and you're at the tip. Just the tip. Just the tip. That, that's literally... I feel like you invited me to that. I, I was waiting. Uh, I totally tried passed. not to, too. I was... um, but yeah, you. I mean... Essentially, you're that it's not going to explode on its way up, and it's gonna it's gonna launch you uh, out of. If we weren't able to go that fast. We wouldn't be able to get to. So, the the capsule goes to the space station. Has it been separated from yes. the rocket? How does it get back? Um, gravity. So, so this, the space station is or floating. 
It de- so it depends. The space station's in in. So you've got. I say gravity. So, Seriously, is it a movie? No, it's a real thing. They're um, space trash. It's old satellites and rockets. Yeah. Well, when they go what do they up. Do about that? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, what I what am we've I gonna managed, do? We've managed to fuck up space already. At least low orbit. <laughs> okay. Uh-huh. And you can like you can you can hold it up and it align. It tells you what star is what, right? Yeah. A little bit, and I got the two ninety nine app, right? Wow. So yeah, I balled out pretty hard on this. No, but just, one thing that it does is it shows you all the space trash. <laughs> did, you, did you spend it because you wanted the other premium content or because you wanted to see space trash? The space trash was kind of out of bonus. But once I found out it had space trash, that's all I wanted to look at. <laughs> is just like hold it up and look at all the shit that's just like debris that's floating in space. So if they, if we have a, an app to know where the trash is at... They, they can literally log. Why don't we have someone getting the trash? Because right now, it... I Well, I can't answer that question. But right now, too. it's... We were able... Styrofoam. Well, yeah. Right? Like, exactly. The plastic bottles. I see an opportunity right now, dude. Hey, entre- entrepreneurs that are out there. I mean, I'm just gotta, saying. Well, I don't know who the guy was that invented the garbage truck. He was a smart man, though. Or was he? Hell, I don't know. You had a great idea. He's probably rich. So, there needs to be a garbage truck for space, dude. Yeah, a dumpster. Space dumpster. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrible. Space dumpster. I don't know. Write that so, down. There's no... I- excuse my ignorance. No. I... There is no atmosphere in space, right? Isn't that the... The, the premise... Okay. Uh, so yeah. So the space trash showing trash job. So in the he, universe. Here's my thing: is it is it aging? From a deterioration standpoint, like so is there's it, no is sun it, to affect it. It's not. Is it decomposing? Does it? Does are there bodies in space? No, there shouldn't be. There could be. There's. Have we spaced anybody? Like the shows. Space docking. Not where you shoot. I mean, I know that's like extreme. He shoots like a dead person out in space. Yeah, is there a body in space? Supposedly either? not. Suppose now I don't. Perhaps they've been lost. I don't know. We'll have to research that. Well, I'm just wondering. What you got a, me thinking now. Who who would we even? I need to find out who you would talk to about that because I think you would be preserved. Okay. You, you could see someone who drowned a hundred years ago, and they looked exactly this like the same. The, that they did because because the water more preserved bodies in Lake Tahoe than supposedly anywhere else in the world. That's crazy. That's another machine, bro. See, a space dumpster. <laughs> We're vacuum vacuum them yeah, up. Why not? <laughs> Depends on what happened. Is it a Dyson? <laughs> it's a Why'd vacuum. you do that? Now Dyson's gonna do it. <laughs> <laughs> you f- you shit on me just now, dude. Uh, right? Yeah. 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 I took that. Oh. Yeah. Duct tape and WD forty. Right, so. The so your job basically is to return once they return once they return yeah do what there was to know about that like uh, medically there's a lot going on there that's where I had an advantage yes I had a team so and and really you know we we created um, myself and kind of my counterpart had I we we were you know we had a mission in a sense right like create this team um, and. And here are the development, the process of the process. You know, there was, and here's the thing: like when it came to the space side of, um, of, of anything that I was yeah. involved with in the past, it was I was so limited in my knowledge. All right. I, I knew firefighting, I knew EMS, and I knew um, you know auto extrication. Right, but all of those things of what I was working with engineers on. Yeah. Right. I'm not an engineer. I don't speak engineer language, and I had to learn what the priorities were for for engineers, and how I needed to take into consideration 
they because uh, it's the way they analyze data. Well, you can put four engineers in a room, give them a task. They will have four different solutions. Yeah, and individually, that's the best solution. And then it's a train wreck. Yeah, yeah. You know, it kind of goes along the the idea of um, yeah. Um, in, in order to fill the gaps. Were you the right? the leader of the team? I was a leader as far as the process because we had we 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 had you know created a team. Then we had to figure out okay after some training events who's who's the leader of these teams. Gotcha. Right. So and then I had to say okay here's what I have to work with which was solid absolutely solid people. How do I how do we best how do we do what's right for the crew? Gotcha. Right. Because that's what it was all about. Yeah. Um. And then, so that takes like talking to the crew, right? Yeah. Getting to getting to know what it's like whenever you return. You know what 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 capabilities do you have? So you hung out with astronauts. Yeah, yeah, That's cool. yeah. I mean, what, I say hang out. Like? I, I mean, at first, like I don't really, you know, I, I'm not like a like astronaut geek in a sense where I don't know all of their names and like. But what but as you meet them, you know, we met um, we met. One of them that kind of like left a little bit of lasting impression with me because he was a uh, he's a normal dude. Yeah. Okay. He was shit hot. Okay. He he was he knew things as as far as um, his wits and his his mental capacity was far greater than mine. But when you talk to him, it didn't come off that way. And he talked about how he he drove a minivan, right? Like he was not. Someone that was like flashy, who was a very regular dude. If you saw him, Neil however, Tyson Degrassi. Neil Tyson Degrassi, yeah, yeah, same yeah. kind of. Yeah, you yeah. could have a conversation with him that yeah. he could speak way over your head. Yeah. However, if he was to talk to you, he would recognize what your aptitude was. Not yeah. that you're dumber, but he would talk to you in a way that to where you might be able to comprehend and pick up on. Um, so, for example, we I asked the question of like. When you return, what does it feel like? That is such a, that's a question that, <laughs> right? Like, how do you describe that? Right? But, but what, it, so by them saying, you know, it's like drinking a couple shots of whiskey is getting turned around on a mechanical bull. Oh, yeah. Right? And getting, didn't taking a couple another shot. Like, so that was relevant to me. Yeah. Um, not that I've ever taken a couple shots and went on a bull. Wyoming? Right, there was a lot of mechanical pools there. It was the only thing we had to do on Fridays. Great. Um, That's no, terrible. So, but like I was, I was able to use the relevance for for his description to kind of determine that procedure build out, right? Yeah. What needs to be done? Um. And you know, so we we came up with the procedure. We tested it, tested it, tested it. Um, went back. You know, made any changes that needed to be changed. Definitely tested it again, and then we, we said, "Hey, we're ready." <clears throat> so when we said we're ready, they put us to exactly that the test, right? Yeah. So they wanted to see us do that, and then look at um, you know how we can, um, how their input can possibly not change what we're doing because they never really were dead set on changing anything they did. They were giving us information based on the condition that they were in. So we had we had full reign, you know. We could have said we're going to bring a forklift in here. We would have never done this, but yeah. like, you know, we're, we could have told them. They, there was never anything out of the question as far as how we're going to do it, which was kind of cool. Yeah, it was, it was new territory for me. Yeah, you know, it's it's kind of interesting that you hit on that. I, I can remember a life experience. I was uh, interviewing at Bosch. I once was deciding if I was going to continue, like, the whole entrepreneurship thing mm-hmm. or take a job. I was at Bosch in a, uh, an interview, and they said, you have a room that is 100 feet wide. You have a machine that is 80 feet wide. There are 10 by 10 doors on the front of this building. There's another building, same size, next to it. I okay. need you to take that machine from one building to the next. How do you do it? Without telling you anything about equipment or anything, they ask you that. <clears throat> so when you were talking about when you when you mentioned like have a forklift or whatever, yeah. I was thinking about like 
how often in life questions like that matter? Mm. Because you have obviously made the correct decisions. So when they asked me that, I was like, these dudes are two jackasses. Mm. In my head, I was like, I mean, hopefully there's a manual to take the bastard apart, and hopefully you have some the ability to put it back together. and some forklifts, right. and then we're going to put it back together the same way it came apart in the mm. next building. Like, that's in my head. But, of course, I had to eloquently talk because I... They included the doors in there for a reason. Yeah, exactly. That's so... And kind of, the right, so we we had... I say that we, we had a wide... Like, we had full ability, but yeah. we did have parameters that we worked in, of course. Yeah. Um, because we you have to look at, you know, the environment. Because, uh, for example, if they would have said that... It, oh, and by the way, that building is on water, right? Yeah. You would have had to go... Totally different, right? You, the, your method for evaluating what you would have done would have probably the water would have played a factor. So, yeah. so the factors kind of played into the decision making, and you know, similar to, to how like business works, <clears throat> if, if you're trying to make a decision that, that's based or that that's going to impact your company or uh, a decision that's going to um, is a risk, yeah, right. If you're if you don't take into account your environment, then you could you could be setting yourself up for failure. Definitely. But if you only allow your environment to dictate your moves, you could be setting yourself up for failure. Do you think that there were any decisions made along the way that were incorrect where you had to like it mm. did and of course, things happen, and you have to go fix them. Yeah, because... yeah. Every decision that I made wasn't imp- wasn't. Um, You're human. What, but but every decision that I made yeah. that I I still stick by to this day. Yeah. Were were implemented, and I had to swallow that, right? Because we are a team. Yeah, that's exactly where I was leading with this. Yeah. So some things that I thought were the best case. Yeah. Right. Just because I'm leading this team doesn't mean I'm not listening to my team. Yeah. Right. So, I understand that. Um, how how I see things going isn't the only way to get there. Certainly. So I knew, you know, I had to, in, in some instances, like, um, take into full account how they said it to me. So if I mentioned one thing and they were very adamant yeah. about it, right, then, because I did what they were doing. Like, if, if they were, if, if we were practicing, we'd go down and, and practice in facilities um, that had like a, a mock-up yeah. of this exact mock-up. So if I was going down there and we were doing that, I, you know, granted a lot of the time that I spent down there was evaluating the procedures and evaluating the team that's going to be doing this. Um, but I got, I did it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just so I can have the relevance and experience to, to make a decision. Did you ever have to, okay, one of your examples was it's like jumping on a mechanical bull, taking a couple of shots of whiskey, and jumping on the mechanical bull. Mm-hmm. How do you how do you implement processes without feeling what they feel? Like, what did you do to prepare yourself for how they felt? So it kind of it goes back to what um, you were talking about earlier, where what what led me, right? What yeah. skills I had to begin Certainly. with, right? So in EM in the EMS world. Okay. You, when you when you're doing your initial training, you become pretty good at becoming a victim. Yeah, that right. Makes sense, because actually. you were practicing on each other. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> so so and then it doesn't stop at your training because you have continuing education. You have ongoing right. So really, you become better at it because you get more bored with it. So it's almost it becomes this like fun thing, right? And there's always like sure. the one jerk who like gives you no leeway. He's literally uh, yeah. like dead weight, and you have to carry him. Yeah, you know what I mean. He's not like giving you any type of like assistance at all. It's always that one guy. But for the most part, you know, um, we we used each other. Yeah. And we said we kind of set levels. We'd say, okay, you have no ability. Sure. You have some ability. Okay. And you know, you you are um, while not full ability, you can help us out. So that's kind of how we, because we wanted to be prepared for someone who, what, could help us kind of get to a position maybe. And then, because when they come back, you know, they're they're sitting in a very awkward position that's not yeah. like a car. 
Yeah. Right. They're they're, so they're not prone. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So your team um, also worked for the aerospace company you work for, or did yes. you? So you didn't have to outsource anyone. No. So these are all um, civilians. firefighters. Civilians. They're all firefighters. Okay, so they're all firefighters. All of them. Shut up. All of them. <clears throat> so they came in with the same, well, I say the same. We have a very diverse team when it comes down to like the training and experience that they receive because they're they're not just from one area. Yeah. Right. We've they're from five different you know cities from all over the U.S. Are they, um, the team, was there intentionally a mix of, um... Yes. Okay. Any so mix I'll, you could think of. I, Old, I, I young, assume, female, male, yeah, black, exactly. white. That's what I would think. Yes. Is because reality of things is that the average African-American male and the average Asian male have different bone structures. Now, and I think the decision for diversity that was built with the team wasn't based and on that factor. As well. But you're right. I mean, yeah, it does so. play, um, you know, it, it, it is another advantage yeah. of that, right? Because you would definitely want to, from the way I'm thinking about it, is you would definitely want to have as much case study as possible before you say this is the process that we're yeah, going to implement. Yeah, especially before you're tested on it because you don't want to look like... yeah jerks well here's the deal i think the easiest way to not turn this into something that's extremely complicated is toyotas weren't made to be worked on by shaquille o'neal right so uh, you're exactly right so like what i said when we were building like a nordic man when we're, 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 yeah you're <laughs> like, right so and struggle to work on a mitsubishi and we had to take that in consideration when we assigned positions on this team because two people were going in <laughs> Right, two people were the ones that were actually going to be entering into um, to to help this extrication. Yeah, and then we had some some people on the outside as well, who would be the uh, you know the handoff. Okay, and then we had a leader of that team as well. So the one not the there wasn't like criteria for who who oh, this yeah. I mean, that's... person going in is, but it usually like right, it's the same in the fire department. It, it, whenever there's a attic space, <coughs> right, or oh, yeah. a crawl space, yeah, you're not going to send me into an attic. We, you look around, and usually, normally, the, the smallest guy, yeah, already knows it's him, definitely, and he's going, God, you know, yeah, no, yeah no. here I go, I, I'll go. Yeah, like, I'd be much, I'd be much more likely to break a door than I would be to get an yeah, attic. Yeah, absolutely. Certainly. Yeah. So, the. I guess something that, that I'm curious about is, did any of you have to do any of the cool space testing that astronauts mm, do? No, no. Um, sucks, man. That would have been an awesome experience. Well, it's not over yet. Sweet. You know, so, I mean, you never know what's... I, I don't... I don't. So we got to see some really cool things on that, things that they do train on. Um, like the the MBL, the, uh, the non-buoyancy lab. So I would have totally been like, we have to all do this huge giant swimming pool. We all have to do this. I, I mean, it would have been really cool, but yeah, I mean, it, the uh, open checkbook, baby, let's go. Yeah, that was all it came down to, right? Time and money. I'm sure that's exactly what it was. It, well, and you know, it's, it's access to like we had, we had, we had a really good insider um, that showed us around the facility, yeah. and we were able to get. Um, you know, I understand. I, no, I, I mean legally, like. Yeah, we didn't do anything sure, wrong. Yeah. This guy had he was an employee, and um, but, but he showed he us could around. Have not done that. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Gotcha. Um, that dude's probably a cool guy. Oh, yeah. You want to talk about stories? Dope. So, and he's got this dude has uh, the guy I'm thinking of. Um, he's got a <sighs> Morgan Freeman style voice. So you has he been do... in space? No, no. Very few people have. But he knows though. about space. He he was he's he's been involved in space flights for. The good and the bad for a lot of years. So, a lot of years. We could have an episode where maybe we got like a Skype call. Mm, maybe just I don't a know. telephone call where face isn't involved. I can ask him. That would be dope. I can ask him. It'd be dope, dude. I mean, he is a. I. I mean, he's the. 
Well, so here's world's the thing. most if, interesting if we, man. If we just do phone call, you know, it's not really not a lot of risk. So there. he lives in Oregon now, but I could always. Yeah, whatever, dude. Yeah, I can ask. Let's him. let's meet some potatoes. He's up. an older man, so he might have like a seven p.m. bedtime. But whatever, dude. you know, you catch him before then. It would be worth it. Whatever needed to happen to have that. Would be I ask. Good. I've asked him some pretty um, interesting, <clears throat> some some pretty upfront, blunt questions of things that just pondered my head. Did he lay it on thick? I, I mean, can you talk about any of it? Well, I, I've. One, I mean, I think the the we're firefighters, so yeah. we always kind of go to these weird places in our mind about like has there has has, has anybody ever had sex in space? Yeah. Right. Sure. And you know he's like. Well, the rumor mill is he's one of the like so. There's not a, there's no study that they did to have like oh yeah it's in this document to show right. But yeah. he's like oh yeah the Russians you know like he gets wrote some pretty cool stories. Um, How badass would it be dude, to be a Russian space baby? A buddy of mine, Superman, isn't that Superman? <clears throat> a but yeah yeah I don't know maybe don't know. whatever. A uh, buddy of mine actually just got deported a couple months ago. It really sucks, but. uh he um he worked on a project called ExoMars, and he helped develop the guidance system on ExoMars. Very cool. He's Russian. Uh, came here. You started. told me about yeah. that. Yeah, I hired him. Yeah. I hired him. He worked. He worked for me for a little while. Um, you told me he was like a <clears throat> computer genius, basically, yeah. right? Yeah. He actually put a phone screen on for uh for Johnny. Ah. Yeah, dudes. A, absolutely. Abs- absolutely, he uh, he was Does collecting. Work visa run out. Was, hmm? Does work visa run out. Yeah, the girl. So he and his wife were married in Russia. So mm-hmm. it wasn't one of those weird. Yeah, things. yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> um, Shout out to came. what's his name? What can you say? No, never mind. No name drop. <laughs> he knows who he is. Uh, well, my only fear is he's trying to come back to America. Yeah, I know what you mean. Um, and they actually dug deep. Like mm. they called me and stuff and asked me questions about his marriage and stuff and. Things I have honestly had no clue about. Right, I don't right. know. Yeah. I don't know what the hell this dude does at home. Right. Like, <clears throat> but he was collecting uh, broken PlayStations mm. and Xboxes and and uh, like would fix them and like, sell them. Yeah, yeah. Hustle, baby. <clears throat> yeah, this dude the uh, grind. when uh, so he and the wife had a, had a, a thing or what, whatever spat, whatever, whatever happened, um, and that kind of killed the whole deal because she had her her mom was here in a citizen so uh, she gained citizenship but he didn't while she was in russia they were married uh yeah so he came here and was doing that whole gotcha. thing gotcha but uh but yeah he um it was crazy to talk to him about the space program in russia because he worked on that project while attending the university like he was there in college, and the whole team that worked on the project were all at the university, and it was actually like their it was basically their class project. Wow. Yeah. So Russia implemented the class project of a university, right? On ExoMars. I mean, of course they tested it, but it's crazy to think about that. Yeah. Didn't get paid. Yeah. Nor credited. Free labor, baby. Yeah, did not get credited. Free labor. But <clears throat> he had evidence. We know that's, college, that's as far as I can talk about that. But like it, colleges do that now, though. It. He could prove it, though. Like yeah. he was, he could prove that he worked on the project. Oh, okay. He could recreate what he used on the. He could take a DJI drone, put a SIM card on it, and fly it to New Mexico if the battery would last. Oh, that's cool. He could fly it as far as the battery would last. Mm. So is is his his money was not as long as his knowledge. But this dude, could he create yeah. a good enough battery pack to have propulsion? Mm-hmm. He could have he could have droned anywhere. That's pretty rad. And uh, he could build um, boards from nothing. Mm. I'm talking like you have a breadboard and a handful of parts. Right. And He's... he could develop and mm. program. That's impressive. A damn drone. Yeah. Yeah, to do... Yeah. That stuff's always... Uh... Dude's like 24. Oh, wow. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, that was crazy. Ugh. So there, uh, the... 
education and stuff, it, it's it's different. When you look at um, when you look at like like I said, the Soyuz capsule. So I've been inside of a, a complete mock-up okay. that's you know, as identical as you're going to get as far as a mock-up goes sure. without going inside the actual capsule. And it's like stepping into um, an episode of uh, 80s <clears throat> Star Trek. Everything so, looks... Antiquated, right? But there, it seems like their philosophy is if it's don't if it's not broke, why do we yeah. fix it? So it continued to work, right? But it it wasn't pretty, right? It, so yeah. it was it was the idea of what we were talking about earlier. They still had the room full of equipment, yeah. Versus going to this doesn't mean that techno- technologically they couldn't, yeah. It was why well the. <clears throat> so this is something that I've experienced. Uh, actually, just having fun with trucks and stuff and building mm-hmm. trucks. A micro switch hooked to a uh, like a relay, mm-hmm. and where you're like creating resistance and things. Every circuit that you've created, one you have more resistance, but two you're you're creating heat. The more heat that you create, the more issues you have. So I've find it very possible they probably did that from a uh, efficiency standpoint. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> a small computer, it is very hard to make a small computer as efficient as a large computer. Uh, the fact that our phones today can do what they do is a mind blower. And it's a, I don't, I mean, I because I that makes total sense to me as, the, as far as why, but what, what if it's just, okay, the U.S. spent... I don't know what the dollar amount is, but it's a crazy dollar amount. Yeah. On developing a pin that worked in space. What did the Russians do? They used a pencil. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know. If it's so, the 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 premises of what, like, why, really means yeah. something to that 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 culture to if. If it's not needed, it can continue as is. Yes. So, I mean, if it, so, when you stepped inside, now you've got into one of these newer capsules, whatnot. It's space age, right? It looks like something from the future, but they're not. What they're, is their fail rate, though? It's undetermined. No, I, I, it's U.S. speculative. U.S. Ast- astronauts get on those flights okay. often. Okay. Right, we were paying eighty million a seat to to fly an American astronaut because that's all we had yeah. before um, the U.S. you know had some ability. Okay, so we were using you know the, the Russian as a taxi. So, what's next? What's next as far as where you, are we going? Yeah, or me? Where, where are you? So here's the thing. You've, yeah. you've, you've accomplished your task. Yeah. Have you been presented with a new task? And I'm not asking you to talk about it if you can't. No. In, in the space area? Yeah. Um, well, so in, in reality, um, so I, I did have, a, you know, I took another chance after developing those pr- procedures for, um, you know, the, the, the team that was extricating. Okay. Um, there was another area where they needed some someone to develop some procedures that really tied in line to my career field in, in firefighting. Okay. Um, and, you know, they had someone in that position who, um, it's not, I don't know, you know, wasn't able to fulfill it long term. So, and okay. they had to do with like the hazardous environment initially. So the first people that go up to this capsule after it's on, on the, you know, on, on, on the earth's surface developing procedures for them to do that with taking consideration of what could be off gassing. Yeah. Right. Which is not fun stuff. Yeah. Yeah. This is stuff, stuff that needs to burn in an atmosphere with no oxygen. Yeah. I got you. Right. Yeah. So I guess it, my interpretation of that is that 
we've sent something somewhere and brought back whatever. I mean, it could be anything. I mean, there there are likely elements and gases and toxins and things that we don't even know exist. Yeah, and more so from like the <clears throat> um, more so from the commodities on the, the capsule itself. So, gotcha. in order to propel, right? Okay. So, if you're traveling at sixteen thousand miles an hour, right, and then you are about to breach into the atmosphere, uh-huh. you need to slow down. Yeah. Right. So they'll actually use thrust. Gotcha. To slow. So that thrust requires gas. What, what is the fuel? What fuel are they? So, um. Um. I. 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 It, so the hydrazine is a very common gas used in. in hydrazine. In, yep. Okay. It's very common propellant used okay. in um. Uh, like space flight. Do you Do you know a good bit about that? Yeah, I mean, I've, oof, um, man, well, the reason I said oof is because I actually just had, like, the MSD up, so that's a lot of what I deal with. MSDS and stuff? Well, yeah, the SDSs of the, uh, um, the the commodities and then tying it into how we respond to that. So, a lot of people aren't going to know what that is. The Um, safety data sheet, so it tells you all of the... Uh, flammability, the combustibility, yeah. the hazards. And when I said MSDS, just add material in front of it. Yeah, yeah. It's just and that's everything that, that's in it. Every everything for some reason yeah. for some reason I don't and it makes no sense to me. They got rid of the M, but every I still call it. I still refer to it as MSDS as well. Yeah. But if it's got sixteen drops of water, they have to say it's got sixteen drops. Exactly. Of water, and that water is both hydrogen mm-hmm. and oxygen. It's the so on one hand, sometimes it seems a little excessive, but I'm it tells sure, you what you need to know. Yeah, I'm sure there have right. been times where some really smart person has said, oh, right here, this yeah. is where this went wrong. Yeah, and, and I can't, you know, I, um, but then again, you know, going back, it tied right into what I did in the Air Force. Sweet. Because F-16s, or F-15s, which I, when I was in Elmendorf, they had a couple squadrons of carried hydrazine. Right? So, so I learned how to respond. To an F sixteen. Did they find that on your resume? Or no. Did, did you? Did they say, "Hey, we need someone that knows this"? No. It was by chance. Chance. No way, dude. I. I I'm telling you, opportunity is. <clears throat> it's, it. You know. Okay. So the, I. I guess my point of saying opportunity is this. Normally, even if it's not consciously, you. You are attracted to things. That for for some reason the attraction comes from something that, you, and then once you're in it, once you take, once you put the toe in the water, yeah, right, and trust yourself a little bit to get there, you're gonna. That's when the things start coming down to. Oh, oh, I know this. Yeah, and oh, I know a little bit about this. Yeah, right. So, but because that's what led you there to begin with. Yeah, the other right? day, um, I was telling a buddy of mine. He was listening to a, a song that was just, in my opinion, ridiculous. And uh, every time he gets in my truck, he's like, what are you listening to? I'm always listening to a podcast, talk radio, or an audio Right, book. right. So the last time he got in my truck, I'm literally listening to a, uh, a book about sickism. Just because I'm just like... Just because. Yeah. It's like, this is why every time we talk about something, I have some form of answer... And why you have no clue what's going on. Right. Because you want to stay in your world. You yeah. want to stay in what your comfort if zone is. If you continue to ingest, you know. Garbage in, garbage out. Yep. And it's, it's like, not, I mean, like, and it's the same thing with the, like the opportunity road where, you know, there's some people that I work with where they'll be in the same position and I have zero hate towards them because of this for 30 years. They're happy. With where they're at, they've reached an, where they say, "This is this is who I am." You know, yeah. I'm good where I'm at, and I'm, from an entrepreneur like yourself, difficult to do that. Yeah, you never, know, it's, I, so it's. But I uh, I know that um, for me personally, I couldn't do that. I I feel I always feel the need to expand, grow, um, so get outside my comfort zone. Something that kind of 
something that I wish that there were more of and there's not is for aerospace companies and just companies in general that have large tasks. I feel like people like me could offer a lot to companies like that, but they don't have a lot of things in place mm. to offer that. Like, they're, they're, I, I would be willing to bet that you at some point <clears throat> had a task where you knew a person and you were like, this person is best for this oh, task. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And you can't call that person. Ooh. Imagine if these aerospace companies would allow someone in your position to say, hey, I got a guy for this. We well, can contract him. They, for- they, we do. <clears throat> so for I'll, I'll give you an example. Um, if, say, a capsule came down, yeah. and it, you know, it, it in design, uh, <clears throat> it, it, it lands on, mm-hmm. you know, like, say, an airbag system. Sure. Okay, and it, it parachutes, slow the speed yeah. down, right? Bags inflate, perfect landing. If it does not, let's say the, the parachutes come out perfectly, the airbags come out perfectly, when it lands, it does some kind of bounce or roll. And it, it's now it's inverted. They're on its side. Yeah. Something has to be done, and and you're dealing with something that's round. Definitely. Usually on a flat surface. Mm-hmm. Or even in, in some instances, water. Right. Take the dry land area for yeah. example, though. You need something that stabilizes. Sure. Right. So. We looked at what can we do to stabilize this thing. Well, guess what? Vehicle accidents. Yep. Right? A car tips over on its side. Yep. They get there. They can't operate around that vehicle until that vehicle yeah. Yeah, has been stabilized. Yep. So who do I call? I call oh, yeah. the manufacturer of the stabilization company, the people that make equipment for that. Definitely. Because that, like you said, <clears throat> man, yeah, I know this stuff works, right? I'm going back to my experiences. Sure. Um, if I wasn't there, some, you know, somebody else could have easily said, from my experiences, this would work. If no one that has the experiences there, that's whenever the headache is caused because they're now you're trying to think that you don't even know that yeah. it's out there. And to your point, right? Like so, there's people that do a lot of really stuff that's not known right and they think that so so they spend the time and the money and the effort trying to create something yeah. that already somebody is looking sure. you know, had been doing for for years and you know the uh the amount of times that that happens in big business if we were to look you know if we had the opportunity to look at because the business now granted the business that we use, the, the, the company that we use is not a small company, but on a grand scam of things, grand scale, right? Like, yeah. They are relative, because they have a very niche. Yeah, definitely. Right? They're, they're trying to do... Yeah, they can only be so big. Right. Yeah. And, um, they you know, they they deal nationally and whatnot, but in, internationally, but still, they're niched. Sure. A lot of those niche, niches are missed, and they're not known, and I feel like... Everybody knows these big companies. Everybody. Yeah. yeah. Right? So, you know, the idea that we can utilize local talent in a sense, right? Sure. Like people that do things that, that might not be on a grand scale right now, but they're one, they're one, they're, they're, they're one away. They're yeah. somebody needing them in yeah. a sense, right? Like it's like it's, one project away of someone saying, man, I could use this. Where can I find it? If there was like a directory, right? If there was something so, where we could... I think that large companies, if... They don't want that. I have a lot of resources. I think that there are a lot of situations... Where if one of these companies could literally just have me and my contacts and be able to say, hey, I need a guy for this, 
I'd be like, okay, cool. Boop. Here, right. Here's a guy for that. Right. Like, it would change everything. Like, yeah. Uh, and, and what what sucks is, <clears throat> oftentimes, I think that there are projects that lack luster because companies can't reach out to people that have genius because they have to work with the staff that they have. Yeah. I think that was the... I could, no, yeah. I, I, I get where you're coming from. So I was curious Or, or they, they're operating in, in a budget or something like yeah. that, and it doesn't include reaching outside. So I was just curious in your situation, because for you, I'm sure that you have had chiefs in the past that probably have knowledge on different things and I'm sure there have been times where yeah. you're like, man, oh, yeah. that person know, yeah, this specifically dude, he would know exactly how to take care right. of this. And and those are my that's my network, right? <clears throat> yeah. So like and, and you know, granted, um when you're it seems like when you're at work, you try to think of the names that are your work counterparts first. They I guess those are the first names to come, right? Like yeah. who can I call? That's Right, that, that's um, that would know this answer, but there are there's a lot of times where there's a better option as far as the expertise goes, yeah, the knowledge goes, and the you know, sure. If I need to know something about wood, who am I calling? Oh yeah, yeah, right. Johnny, yeah. There's no not a, there's no yeah nobody yeah. like I don't care if I'm working on a wood project in my house, yeah. Or if I'm, you know what I mean? It doesn't matter where I'm at. If I need to know something about it, I know I, I got, like like you said, I got the contact. I can say, dude, and, and get the answer I'm looking for. So something that just came to mind, and this is the, what is the worst case scenario? So let's say, just right from the beginning, the capsule has landed. Okay. And we'll just say that it's permanent. Per, okay. We're, we're okay. going to skip the whole... Yeah, thing. yeah. Um, are we prepared or do we have a process in place for gases that we currently are not familiar with or accelerants? Uh, I mean, so, so we, we know what's <clears throat> on, on it, what's com- what it's coming back with. So Assumed. Well, as long as it's not carrying anything... So hydrazine, Hydra, we know hydrazine. Does and we're prepared for that. Hi- hydrazine. Okay, <clears throat> you're prepared for a lot of things in general. Let's say a really good example would be an atomic bomb. Mm-hmm. Really good example. Completely harmless without a catalyst. Does hydrazine have a catalyst? What what? catalyst can be introduced and what is out there that we don't know is out there and um i don't know because i don't i i i don't know if there's anything like just floating around in space that would right like that could that that could attach to so we don't currently to the best of your knowledge we assume that it's safe because we've been out enough, obviously. Not that hydrazine is safe. Well, so that the atmosphere or lack or thereof is not going to include anything other than what it's left with. Okay. <laughs> okay. Cool. So that's that answers that for me. Because in my head, because I'm yeah. unfamiliar with space, in my head there are just gases well, out and there. And you got to understand something too. Like I've been in the firefighting game a long time. I have not been in the space game a long time. So these. Don't the fact that asking a question, yeah. If I haven't thought about it, I've asked it, right? Like, yeah, I I was so I watched a couple space documentaries, yeah, (laughs) okay. That was the extent before they asked me to be a part of this, so it wasn't like they were looking at me going, like, we need Dan, yeah. It was like, we have an opportunity for somebody here, yeah. That needs to do these things. They didn't even use the word opportunity. I am pl- I plug in opportunity every chance yeah, I get. Yeah, definitely. You know what I mean. So, 
I saw that statement of work that needed to be accomplished and I evaluated myself. Yeah. And even if sometimes I'm not even like, I got it. That's me. I'll, I, easy. Some of the yeah. things that I come across that I'm asked to do, I'm exactly that, right? Like, that's no problem. Not a yeah. problem. I got that. Sure. Some things, it's like, whew. You got to yeah. read it a couple times, right? It's like, yeah. I don't know what that word is. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm right? Sure so, so there's, you know, you, you have to break it down, and then, then you have to make a decision. Like, like you said, yeah. is there somebody better for the job than me? And if that, you know, am I going to turn down the opportunity to allow that to happen? You know, to, to give sure. this to somebody else. And, you know, I, there have been times where, I, where for the betterment of a team, yeah. I did say, hey, you know, as much as I appreciate it, you know, I'm going to reach out to somebody that I know yeah. and, and say, you know, see if they're able to do it because this would, this is right up their alley. Definitely. That's admirable. Yeah. I mean, I, I cause I, li- I like success. Definitely. Uh, I like, I aim in, I hate failure. I, I hate failure. I don't hate failing. I should be clear about that. I'll yeah. fail all day. So, well, there is no success in this world without failure. Yeah, no. So, not a chance. All right. So, at this point, um, we've reached the capsule. Uh, we've assumed, based on what we've know up to this point, that mm-hmm. there are no additional gases. And that comes through the procedures that that I you know I, yeah I created to to ensure that right. So we have a team okay. that goes in and they do a safety PPE. assessment. Yes, hazmat what you, suit. What do you PPE? So. We, we're just using... SCBA. What, what? Same packs that we use in the fire department. Okay. Air packs. Cool. Yeah, right on. Well, hell, I mean, if it's safe for a... We, we, we deal with hazmat in the fire. Would, you know we, what I mean? I would feel like it, it, there's probably more of a likelihood that you're going to run into a, a hazardous gas in a hospital fire or in a medical facility fire. Or there. a garage. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, right. because... Ammunition. The, well, these these right, not just gases. Well, but yeah. So you hazards. say a garage. That is something to, to think about. That's crazy because there are a lot of home these shops. companies make this stuff when they're developing it. Don't get me wrong; their MSDS is for everything, but they don't develop it thinking is when this garage catches on fire. What uh, is it? Noxious? Is that the word? What's the word? If you inhale it, it would kill you. Toxic oh. is just, but there's no toxic's a good good word okay. for that. A toxic so, chemical yeah, or a toxic um, gas or that's so. When I think of space, man, I really just think that there's just like random like blobs of like fucking acid jelly floating out there. You know, like <laughs> I don't know why I think that. Just because you'd be you should be more concerned about space trash. I watch way too much Rick and Morty, dude. <laughs> I'm sorry I went there, but I did. So now I'm just like, you I've know. never watched that show. <laughs> Do I need to? My sister loves it. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. No, nah, I mean I, I've. I, it's uh, freaking hilarious. So here's the issue. One of the writers apparently had some uh, some sort of pedophilia thing pop up. Oh. Uh, I don't think that it was actually pedophilia. I don't know. Right. 100. percent I didn't look into it enough. But it was enough to. Cancel them or something? I think he had an illustration of some uh, sort. I don't think, like, the dude is, like... He wasn't on Epstein Island. No. Okay. Yeah, he's not, like, whacking off the kids or nothing. Like, right. I think he did an illustration that was, like... Uh, I, might, I think I might have heard about but, that. All right. Anyway, Rick and Morty, completely hilarious. Okay, okay. So, I mean, the dude might be a pedophile. I don't know. Right. I'm completely... Just it, like you're talking about the show, not the creator. I was not going to take the time to read tabloids to learn about this poor bastard. Mm. I don't care. I'd already watched a couple episodes. I was like, I love these episodes. Right. Like seriously, like the whole Epstein thing. I'm not gonna um tomorrow. I'm not gonna be like Outcast sucks, and I'm not gonna watch Forrest Gump because some dude on the internet said that Forrest Outcast. Gump, uh, not Outcast. Is it out? out what is the Forrest Gump or the Hank? Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks. What's the Tom Hanks movie? Four. Castaway. Castaway. Yeah, I'm not going to stop. I was like, Castaway. Outcast. No, no, not Outcast. No, yeah. 103,000 is the don't, Yeah, don't make me a no, So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to stop watching Castaway and Forrest Gump because someone said that. Yeah, totally. I mean, don't get me wrong. It doesn't mean I you're pro. I subscribe to some of those thoughts. Yeah. But there was not enough evidence 
in this particular case for me to dismiss the yeah, show. Yeah, I got what you're saying. But it's hilarious. Absolutely hilarious. Right. And it's full of things. It's like The Simpsons, but definitely a lot more harsh. Right. Like, it's it's rough. Okay. Yeah. All right, I'll but, check it out. So watching stuff like that, uh, admitting that moments after saying I don't ingest junk is kind of funny, actually, mm. that I've... <laughs> maybe, like... I mean, everybody needs a little junk food, right? I have... I mean, I have my... We just uh, have pizza. My vice... Yeah, exactly. Stoner's pizza. I mean, I... I you know, Shout out to Stoner's pizza. Dude, that... I need to come back to West Ashley, by the way. The too. flap on the thing says uh, legalized marinara. I thought it said legalized marijuana. And I told him, I was like, dude, can you believe the box says legalized marijuana? And he was like, it says marinara. But it's like, subliminal, oh, yeah, though. Yeah. It's subliminal. Yeah, I'm, whatever. It's telling you. Hashtag. Right. <laughs> I'm going to use that. Legalized so, marinara. So, <clears throat> all right, you've, you've now reached the capsule that's not a space shuttle. So, worst case scenario. That's where you were going, right? Yeah, uh... Worst case scenario is there's a leak. The training. Did you work on the people approaching the capsule? Yes. Or did you work on the people inside the capsule, exiting the capsule, or both? I worked on getting people getting out or getting people out. Did you work on the people being trained to get out? Worked with them. Okay. So, so explained our process to them. So you're... Your part of this is from a firefighter's perspective. Get the person out. The get the person out because effectively, they've caught on fire while flying out of the sky. And, and not only catch it on fire, but um, like that's not a major concern because there's limited. <laughs> that's funny. I mean, uh, that would be a wild <laughs> ride. A well, it's it obviously it's a major, but it's it, it's a <laughs> low probability. Yeah, because okay. the combustibility, like what's combustible inside, and your ignition sure. sources are very limited inside. Okay, um, but it doesn't mean that they couldn't have a medical issue. Gotcha. Right, or um, a traumatic, like a, if it sure. lands hard. Yeah, right? you've got um, you know, internal bleeding of some sort. Gotcha. So we had to, you know, we did look at from an expedient standpoint. Sure. You know, if some. Like you said, worst case scenario, yeah. unconscious, unresponsive. Um, you know what? What are we going to do? Like that to me, I hit that before I hit. What are we going to do? Normal. Gotcha. Because, yeah, right. Like if I can figure out what to do in the worst case scenario, yeah, then it, well, figuring it on the easiest case scenario is easy. Coming from a firefighter's perspective, uh, the you've probably been trained on loss of life a lot more than the average person who is in these situations because True. yes so a lot of the, the team I mean, well and a lot of the team that we work with are non-fire people die in car crashes like almost more than yeah you know like i don't know i'm sure well you see the sign on the road all the time right yeah. this many people died in south carolina yeah. this year yeah, I'm sure that it's... it's And every time I see that number, especially later in the year, I'm like, holy shit. Yeah. Stop texting and driving. I've been working on that a lot. Yeah. I had to for my kids because so, they see me and now they're driving. I uh, not endorse it all, by the way. Uh, it's called a uh, rock form. It's got like these really heavy-duty magnets on the back. Oh, and keep it away deal. from you? Yep. You know, my it's son not next to me, I yeah, can't pick it up. My, my son has one that kind of goes up by his radio. Yep, that's and, exactly what this does. And it's, so it's got a really heavy magnet. I notice when I use it, I might change my song, yep. but I'm not, you know, I felt I thought I felt something vibrate. Right? Yeah, like exactly. Pick it up, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's yeah. Keep getting it away from yourself is yeah. the best thing. Best thing for that I have found for me and uh, Apple CarPlay. Yeah, Which, it, uh, it makes it where I don't touch mm -hmm. and i've got i've made myself get into the habit of hitting the button mm -hmm. so but anyway that's off track um stay alive okay stay exactly alive. yeah live to see tomorrow so the hatch mm -hmm. proper term yeah okay nailed the, it, nailed it <laughs> on the space capsule <laughs> the space capsule hatch so I would think that they've probably spent a lot of time making it where this thing won't 
depressurize. So oh, I'm yeah. thinking about like that old Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. Totally. That's where the, like the yes. eyes come out dead. Total recall. Is that a real thing? Um if you're in space, yeah. But you can't so, that you wouldn't have the same effect here. But you have to go through that. Yeah, yeah. So the capsule came from space. Yes. Okay. So I would think that one of the worst things that could happen is that, depressurization. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean that's probably death. Fair yeah. Unless you can fix the problem. And it also depends on the size of... So you have a pressurized, just like an aircraft, that you, a commercial aircraft. Yeah. You know, that to get the ear popping and everything. That, yeah. that, that cabin is pressurizing. Yep. And so you have, you know, a very similar thing with that to allow positive pressure, right? So things are... Things are being pushed out onto the skin to not allow things to be able to come in. Okay. But space is not like here. Right? Space is a vacuum. So it's hard for me to understand what it means to. So. So if I dropped a cannonball or a bowling ball and a feather in space, they would fall right. at. The at the Eagles, they would they would, okay, they would so, literally. Yeah, they, I've they, seen that. Is it our our atmosphere? Our uh, is it the ionosphere? Is that the what is the outermost shell that we consider to be our atmosphere? Is it the stratosphere? Either way, whatever. Yeah. Okay. I, I honestly is that where? So when it's entering mm-hmm. that. You don't have a big concern about the same reason you don't have a big concern about opening an airplane door. Okay. Because once you once you get to a certain point, the pressure on like being able to get a door open, right, and pushing it out whenever something is traveling. Right? And so you're getting yeah. resistance going to the inside. It's pushing safe to assume these are all outswing for that purpose. Well, yeah, and, and really well, I mean, with, sure with like a, a hatch reason. door like the hatch door it requires a special tool to open it. That's right. So it, it, it's uh, like dual lock. It's it's got these over the top safety. Re- no, I say yeah. over the top. Well, so because I don't know so. about this, I'm you think what everyone else is thinking? There's an like airplane a door or something? No, like, yeah, hey, yeah. Hey, well, I mean, it kind of like really, it's, it's actually <laughs> almost more simplistic than that. It's like a you know a T handle that you like, yeah. like a water tool, sure. like sh- water shut off, yeah. right? It's like t- right, and you, you turn it. It, it. You have to do it in a certain in procedure. In my head, I hear clunk, 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 clunk. Yeah, I don't know why. Right, I and, you, like a, and you like you yell the secret password. Yep, open says me. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Never forget. Oh man, Never little forget. rascals. Yeah, solid flick. He mail he, he mail yeah. yeah. uh, uh, Right. Uh, what's the password? What's the password, Froggy? Yeah. Solid okay. reference. Yeah, I did that. <laughs> so that was nice. All right, so you you reach this thing. Um, is there a plan? If if it's bad news, yeah. Um. Well, I mean, I mean if it was bad. Well, if if <laughs> call a meat wagon, I mean, not to be, you know, yeah, insensitive. But I mean, you know, there's a, there's certain things that are out of your control. Man, if you saw space and you wanted to be an astronaut and then you died on the oh, way back, God, as long as it wasn't right. like a bunch of pain or whatever, it's like sad. it's horrible for your family and everything. But dude, you saw space, bro. Oh man, I would love to do that. Yeah. My wife asks me all the time, would you ever go to space? Yeah. No, I worked with, uh, in this same program, I, I worked, uh, I still currently do, um, work with people alongside people that I had no clue what they did. Okay, so. That's cool. I, months and months and months and you know, a year, two years go by, and I'm working alongside, and specifically this, this one person, um, and then I asked her one day, her name, um, I'm not going to say her name, but I was like, what do you want to do? Like, you know, whenever you're, what is your goal? I guess she's like, I want to, oh, oh, I want to be an astronaut. So I would have, like, they're, I want to say normal people. She was, she 
very, very brilliant person. But they're not just chasing this dream by chasing being an astronaut. Yeah. They're doing the things that they need to do in order to set them up to be an astronaut. Right? Like, I got you. So they, you know, you can't, you, it's hard to just volunteer. It's, it's the same thing with business sometimes where you just say, ah, I think I'm going to start up a company yeah. to do this. If you, without putting some legwork in or, or getting sure. something that you're involved with pr- previously, it's very, yeah. probably much more yeah. difficult Definitely. than just raise my hand and say, I think I, I want to be an astronaut, right? Yeah. I'm going to apply. What, do, what credentials do you have that, that allows you yeah. to be successful whenever you do get accepted? That's what they look for if you want to be an astronaut. Yeah, definitely. I should have started 10 years ago. I think you'd be a good candidate today. I would be the biggest astronaut ever, and they would tell There's me. There's got to be one. They'd be like, dude, you need to lose 200 pounds. We don't make suits this big. We're going to start right there. Well, if, if, uh, that would be what the, it would be. Luckily, me and you would fall same speed, though, so if anything went wrong, are we going to go? Exactly. <laughs> That's a wild. That's a wild. Yeah, the idea. You would fall the same speed. Yeah, I would no, totally. Just anything. I'd like, yeah. I mean, I would have a lot of fun with that. Space scares the shit out of me. What scares you more, space or or um, like the depths of the ocean? What what what? The depths of the ocean. Ocean. Let me tell you why. When I think of space, although I do think that there are things out there, I think they're so far out that we won't see them in my lifetime. Mm. I hope that we do. Uh, when I think ocean, I think predator. Mm. Just because... Yeah. And the deeper you get, the worse it'll get. Yeah. Yeah. And the fact that we've never been to so the bottom. Think about this exact opposite. So things up are vacuum, things down are pressure. Mm. Kind of crazy to think about. But both, it's both cold. Here's what's crazy is the astronauts train underwater to get ready for space. And giant pools because of lack of because of lack of, lack of gravity. So they have these giant pools that they now that's for How their that work? that's for their space walks. Yeah. Okay, that's whenever they put that giant suit on and they're actually outside of yeah. the space station. So when how long have they been in space when they come back? Uh, very dependent. So some missions are last. Couple weeks, some less. Um, I don't know the long. I know uh, one of the Russian astronauts was. I think he did like four hundred and fifty days or something like consecutive. I know there's like a uh, there, there's some sort of an award or recognition if you're there for a hundred days. Like hundred days is kind of like the milestone yeah. that everybody that's cool looks for. That's super cool. Yeah, I don't know. That's a, going up and seeing it. And and getting that like, I say bird's eye view, but you're really getting more than that, aren't you? Yeah. Um, would be awesome, but man, I, the lack of what I feel like I need, as far as like family and, and yeah. you know what I mean, would it would break me? I don't know, but I, I've been you know I've been deployed right so. Yeah, I've had an opportunity to spend some time a long way away from home, and uh, Skype and, and or not even, Skype wasn't even invented you know, using landline phones, yeah. um, you know. But still, you know, they they did have some like video services and stuff. But whew, that would be. What do you really call me on a sat phone? Sat phone. It's pretty crazy how uh, the amount of time that it would take. Yeah, to relay a message. Because he'd be like, "Hey, buddy, how are you doing?" Right. When I heard that, and I would respond, it would be like seven or eight seconds. And then you'd start getting on top of each other because... Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, I got... After the first call, after that, I knew if he called me that I needed to take the time between the moments to kind of... Yeah, give him the... Yeah. The lead, yeah. So, what can I do to make that more comfortable? Nothing. Oh. Uh. Oh, you're not that old, bro. 37. You're still a young man. I appreciate that. That's because yeah. you're just a couple years behind. You're trying to tell yourself the same thing. 
Yeah, dude. You're still young, man. I feel, I feel, I feel like I got a little, little bit of youth left in me. Yeah. Definitely. So when, let's say, well, there's going to be different periods of time. Is the the SOP or standard opera is the standard operating procedure the same for someone that's been up for ninety days as they have been for hundred eighty days? Yeah, we consider it to be. You know, we, we run it the same. Okay. And, and a lot of this has to do with... So I imagine you, you run them worse. Like they've been up there 450 days or whatever, whatever it is. Yeah. The, the procedure doesn't change. How we um, maneuver might change. Right? So we... we because the, the good thing about it, everything that's, that's normal, we have to include communication, right? So yep. we're going to be talking... To the crew, right? We're yeah. gonna say, "Hey, how you feeling? Do you need a second? Right? It doesn't have to be this fast process, unless it needs to be yeah, a fast process. Well, it's not gonna be on fire. Exactly. So, as long as everything is good to go, yeah. we can we can kind of. Well, so yeah. Well, so if you treat twenty days the same as two hundred days, you know, they might say you're just we being can, more delicate with someone. Well, and, we're, and if we're than talking to them, they might say, "Hey, okay, hey guys, I'm good." You know, okay. Not like I'm good, like we were just going to like stand back, but all right, like let's. So you did EMS stuff. Oh yeah. So I imagine you kind of treat this uh, similar to like a concussion, and I don't mean that. I mean just in general, how if you evaluate. Yeah. So I remember like football. I got popped really hard one yeah. time, and they asked and I was questions. Out. They they put the the yeah. ammonia. Yeah. Ammonia and when inhaler. you come in, the first thing they ask you, you know, is like, uh, what's your name? Yep. You know, so I imagine at. is it similar to that? Uh, we don't we don't have. I mean right. not that, but just. I mean I think that we we do have um, we have the ability to question their level of consciousness if we see something wrong. Sure. Right. So we can kind of give them that rundown, um, and you know you're you're talking about astronauts like these guys. Yeah, are these like, are intelligent. Well, they're the best of the best. So if something is wrong, they're probably going to indicate. So well, we've heard a couple of different things. We've heard they're very prideful people, and they so they're, they're gonna feel do. like they can do things that they actually can't do. So basically, what that means is stay really close, even if they say they can do something. Yeah, right. yeah, I'm fine. Exactly. Right. Yeah, they're all Clint Eastwood. Yeah, and I mean, I say all, but you know how that works. Like, yeah, maybe a majority or something. But you know, this is stuff. This is all stuff that really, um, you know, we're gonna we're. Just, not like waiting to prove, but you know it's it's stuff that's like coming to, like we're about to see. Well, I'm here to this tell you, buddy. I, I don't know why I feel like the astronauts are like the greatest. Dude, they're. But I think it's because space exploration is so it's huge so, to me. Yeah, it's, it's so interesting. But I seriously like if an astronaut told me a, a chicken can pull the train, I'm not asking questions. Right. Yeah, I'm like saddle that bastard up. Let's go. Right. Choo choo. Well, what, <laughs> what planet can that happen? Yeah. Yeah. yeah whatever, dude. Yeah. It's going to be a funky chicken. So, um, yeah, man. This was a good time. I've got to do this again. I do want to... Uh, this is uh, this is interesting. This is something I never thought. Yeah. You know, I'd like get a chance to be on a legit podcast yeah. with someone that I know so well. Yep. So pretty cool. So, in wrapping things up, is there like is there anything that you know that we can hint to that is like super cool and upcoming in aerospace? Ooh. Um. When you're talking about space, yeah, is it? I mean, I think that nothing. There's nothing capsules? that I know that um, that isn't public. Okay. So uh, I don't really have, you know. Of course, you've got your like people that are in some programs that might say like, "Oh, this is a cool thing," but even those things um, are are public knowledge, but maybe not being. Uh, widely spread. Definitely. Right. I mean, you you talked about earlier about like Starship. Yeah. Or going, you know, the they're, they're, the plans to go to Mars are already there. Yeah. We're like we, 
They have, you know, things that are already developed and built that allow them to even have like a uh, rest area between here and there. Do you feel like he implemented uh, an internet to have a way to have satellites to communicate? I don't know. I mean, I would never be able to read into what the all completely actual opinion. motive is, but I, I mean, the way I see it is, it's everything that you know, Elon Musk or, or any like big innovator has been involved with is usually to um, solve a simple problem. So, you know, you, I mean, do, you know do you understand a cell phone network? Mm, all right. So as G- far as like repeater, okay, so this or is whatnot. My knowledge is about 15 years back, so it may be better now. 15 years ago, and this is probably the same, a GSM network, uh, which was like Singular and Suncom at the time here. Now it's ATT, TT mm-hmm. Mobile. Uh, six miles. You have six miles from one tower to the next. Okay. A CDMA network, 12 to 13 miles, almost double. The distance... That his satellites are. The Starlink? Yeah. In, in Skylink? Two, yeah, Skylink or whatever it is. So yeah. the comparison is huge. Massive. This is the amount of that are being sent up. So they're, they're, they're small drone. I honestly right? don't there's know. Like, there's like 30,000 of them up going up. So here here's my thing. If they can achieve fair speeds at that distance... Thinking of things like a cell phone tower, which is the way I do. You gotta think though, if we're trying to if we're trying to communicate with things that are far away from us, we yeah. we have to put it into perspective as far what we consider far. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Far to us and far to is completely You're a million miles. Here, here's the thing, and here's here's where my head is at. These satellites are in space. But space is infinite. But the internet that we're receiving is coming through an atmosphere that has a lot to to deal with. Yeah, that atmosphere isn't out there. So to go Uh, from there to here, signal how much further can you go out? So where I'm going with this? How fast can it travel? And how much further can you put the next satellite? How much further can he put the next satellite? And how quick can he get 30 of them out there? How quick can he get 30,000 of them out there? I don't think it necessarily matters. I don't think men will be on Mars as quick as... There's already things on Mars. Well, so... the We're going to have Wi-Fi on Mars before men are on Mars. <laughs> they're going to have... Gonna have I mean, I, is, is that... Because there's not, that's not unreasonable. At all. Because, like, we have... Okay, so... So we've sent things to Mars. We have yeah. ro- rovers on Exo-Mars. Mars. Yeah, yeah. ExoMars, right? Yeah, so we, he's on Mars. So here's the thing. We can only control it when it reaches. We have a window of window. time. Window, absolutely. Okay, narrow the window. You can, narrow the window. Is, is The window is based off of the planet alignment. Okay, yeah, but the planet alignment relative to us. Oh, okay, I see what you're saying. So having like substations that yeah. align with hey, okay. this is I love talking about this stuff, but when it comes to well, so not, just everything is conceptual from yeah. from our conversation. Definitely, things, absolutely. Well, it, we want to. I, I believe conceptually is where everything happens. Absolutely. You know, Elon Musk didn't. You know, I doubt one day that he was like. Well, look at this. Look the your yeah, blueprint, definitely. right? Yeah, definitely. That, that, that started yeah. as a concept. Elon Musk didn't rubber band a Hot Wheels to a bottle rocket and say, "I'm going to pull this shit off in right. 20 years." Yeah, you know, like, so yeah. that's my thought. He, I, but I, he believed in a concept. I sincerely believe that he is building something that we don't know about as a test. It's a test. I think it's a test, and I only believe that because I know how networks work, latency, and data. And we have a lot of people using these. If instead of 30,000 people using a tower, you had 12, 
the towers could be further apart. Sure. That shit's a lot to think about, buddy. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean... And where's your starting point? I don't think it's how you get there. I think it's where you stop on the on the on the way. Mm. And if if we had real time, if you could Skype call someone twice as far as the moon in two years, we would have made innovation that hasn't been made in I mean, I would not put it past to say like he's been, you know, in, in this He's been on this this journey to get to Mars. Yeah. So, the things that are being yeah. done. Yeah. In parallel, with his plan to get to Mars, yeah. might very well impact. Now oh. the flamethrower. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> he did that. Just, honestly, he could be putting these things in the air yeah. just to make a big penis and he would do it just because it'd be like I yep. did this and there's nothing you right. can do about it. A big it. middle finger. Or yeah, he would do like it. Yeah, yeah, I think a big Tesla logo. There's probably a big Tesla logo like somewhere that we mm-hmm. don't even know. Probably like stamped on a planet right. somewhere. And he's just yeah. like when you guys find this you'll know I did this twenty years ago. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I wouldn't doubt it. Well I'm sure you're ready to wrap things up. We're uh we're like like three hours in. That was fun though. Yeah. It was a good time. It's funny that you've You've watched Joe Rogan things, and I'm sure you've thought, man, three hours is a long time to podcast. Yeah, that takes me like six six settings. You know, I'll, I'll watch you, half an hour. You blew through this, dude. Yeah, no, it did. And we probably didn't even get to, <laughs> to all of this, so. Well, we'll, we'll do it again. Um, I say that we, let's reach out to the, the Morgan Freeman voice guy. See if we can get on a phone call. Let's see if I can do that. If we could have an episode that was not about entrepreneurship, but just a, a side episode, I'm sure that people would follow that. Yeah, I mean, it would, it would, uh, I can, I can think of questions. Yeah. I could, I have access to this guy, but, you know, there's things that I ask him and there's things that I don't ask him on a, on a, yeah. uh, on a work call. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, but sure. I could think of, uh, Couple questions that I, I definitely things that I think about all the time. Again, Neil Tyson DeGrasse, right, bro. Yeah, and you know everyone that's watched and, and followed us and came along, we uh, I really appreciate it, and uh, we'll we'll do it again. The next episode, I believe, is real technology uh, is now doing. I think he goes as far as like home automation and stuff like that. Oh. I think he's. Oh think yeah, he's you told me about. That. Yeah, I think yeah, he's you did tell me that. about so that. So I believe he's that's the the direction he's going in. So that'll be the next episode. Thanks everyone that's, that's followed along this far. Um, I know that we've probably you know lose audience along the way, and if you're watching this days from now, still thank you. I appreciate it. If you haven't already subscribed, subscribe. Follow this guy. Do it. Do it. Do it.